Hello and welcome to America Latina Story. Today we are going to talk about an expeditionary feat that happened at a time when there were neither GPS nor e-phones and that nearly ended up in utter disaster. The year is 1913. Theodore Roosevelt had just lost the election primary the year before, which would have given him a third term as President of the United States. He was 55, although he looked much older. He wanted to banish this defeat from his mind and renew the adventure he had led in Africa a few years earlier. Around the same time, the great Brazilian explorer Candido Rondon had just discovered the source of an unknown river in the depths of the Amazon. He had named it the River of Doubt. It was 760 kilometers long, and it was one of the wildest and most formidable in South America. The two men decided on a joint scientific expedition that would descend the stream to its confluence with the Amazon. After a lecture tour across South America, and just as Percy Fawcett had done in 1908 on his Rio Verde expedition, Roosevelt and the American scientists who accompanied him ascended the Rio Paraguay to the town of Caceres to join Colonel Rondon and the Brazilian members of the expedition. From there, hunting and collecting numerous specimens of South American fauna for the American Museum of Natural History, the explorers went due north through extremely difficult terrain and impossible jungle. On the 27th of February 1914, after having traveled by way of Tapirapua and the open plateau Paresis, they reached the source of the River of Doubt. There, the expedition split into two to follow two different rivers, and only six explorers, aided by 16 rowers, set out to descend the River of Doubt in seven canoes. These six men were Candido Rondon, Theodore Roosevelt, his 23 years old son Kermit, naturalist George Cherry, Lieutenant Joao Lira, and military physician Dr. Jose Antonio Cajacera. Serious things were about to begin. The expedition encountered many problems from the start. Victims of insects and tropical diseases, its members suffered from high fevers. The slightest wounds became infected. The food carried proved unusable. And the canoes were unsuitable for the tumultuous stream barred by numerous rapids. And ruthless Indians belonging to the Cinta Larga tribe were constantly shadowing them. After 18 days of travel, they had consumed a third of their provisions and had traveled only 125 kilometers of the river. It was impossible to know how much was left, probably five or six times as much. Rapids and waterfalls became so frequent and dangerous that they had to carry the canoes through the jungle to get around them. Four canoes were lost broken on the rocks. Of the 16 porters who had started the expedition, only 13 survived. Of the three dead, one died in the rapids, a second one was murdered, and his assassin abandoned in the jungle. The scientific expedition had turned into a fight for survival. Yet a true force of nature, Roosevelt became very ill. He wanted to be left behind. The other members of the expedition refused. Reflecting on their predicament, Roosevelt remarked that, quote, the very pathetic myth of beneficent nature 
could not deceive even the least wise being if he once saw for himself the iron cruelty of life in the tropics. Nature is entirely ruthless and entirely indifferent to good or evil. For days and days, a pitiful sight, the expedition dragged itself north among voracious insects, primitive animals, and the savagery of untouched nature. Thinking themselves lost, the members of the expedition, more than their alive, had the chance, after 48 days of suffering and 300 kilometers of river, to meet a group of latex collectors, called in Portuguese seringueiros, who led them to the Rio Aripuana, which they reached on April 26, 1914. Roosevelt was treated in Manaus, and he was able to return to New York. He told the story of the expedition in his Through the Brazilian Wilderness, a book that significantly minimizes the dangers and dreadful circumstances of the expedition. Many raised voices to express doubts about the veracity of the account and the reality of the expedition. Roosevelt gave two lectures, one to the National Geographic Society in Washington, the other to the Royal Geographic Society in London that greatly dispelled the doubts. Thirteen years later, in 1927, American explorer George Miller Diot succeeded in descending the river for a second time and confirmed Roosevelt's story. The case was closed. Apart from helping in fixing the course of the stream, this expedition on the River of Doubt did little scientifically. It was more of a sporting feat than anything else. Roosevelt never fully recovered his health. Wanting to resource himself, he had paid his tribute to the great river and its forest, and he died five years later. Following this tragic adventure, the Brazilian government decided to name the river Rio Roosevelt. Thank you for watching this program. Do not hesitate to subscribe to the channel. This is all for now. Goodbye.